Thanks. So hello everyone. Today I would like to talk to you about um, my passion, is the Cycles Man. We started this adventure a couple of years ago. And uh, what is, well, we, we all know that pretty much in the waste industry value chain, the easiest and most effective way to deliver high-end recyclables at the end, of, at the, end of, the, of the process is to actually change the way, the change people behave in front of the bin at the very upstream in the chain, not downstream, right? Very cost effective. Well, changing behavior is actually a science. It's been acknowledged by the EPA in the last report. And there is a professor with a very um, beautiful last name. I tried to pronounce it. I think it's Prochaska. Anyway, it's a PhD uh, psychology professor. They came up with this model that shows you how there are different stages in changing someone's behavior. Um, it's a quite interesting read in case you have time later. But let me tell you the, the key point. is that change happens in small steps. And not everyone is at the same level, right? Actually, lots of people are in the second stage. It is called defined contemplation. Well, the second stage me basically says that people are aware of the problem, but they're not sure who owns the problem or why things are happening. They just know that they have a problem, right? And if you look at what Planet Act says, 85% of Australians are aware that they should recycle at home, and that's the right thing to do, right? The point is that 50% of Australians are very confused in what to do, how to do it. And you know, everybody knows that a bottle of glass goes into the yellow bin in the majority of the council in Australia. The point is that very few people know what to do with the pizza box, not to go on other items, right? Well, how do you solve this problem? Well, we think there are three different steps. One is incentivizing people, giving them a reason to do it. Two is facilitating their journey by providing easy to access education. So not some crampy PDF, you know. No, easy to read, two steps, right? Third thing is giving them a feedback on their behavior, telling them how they're doing. Well, do we do believe that it's time to bring the waste industry in the future? And how to do it? It's through digital solution. We heard Steve and, and, and the EPA presentation earlier about how important and how powerful is digital, our digital tools today. I do have a LinkedIn account anyway, you can, you can link me. And uh, we have a, a digital platform that has three different, uh, three different products. A product to visualize data, analytic product. We have a reward platform. And we, have, we provide mobile education in a very easy to use and free for everyone uh, way. Well, we have simplified the way people do bin inspections. So we know that different stakeholders in the industry already do bin inspections, or you can call them assessment, or whatever it is. But lots of them use pretty much pen and paper and Excel in the majority of the case. Well, we create an app that is leveraged you know, the latest technology, like geocoding, uh, cloud-based. It's a bit fancy, but it works quite well. It took us a couple of years to fine tune it, and now it's it's really there. And we've been told by different parties we work with, which one of them is a big consultancy firm in Australia, that uh, it's a quite easy way to do bin inspection very quickly and very efficient. I got excited, so I started to tell you about recycled data. And I actually have a few slides about it. What recycled data does is it, tells, it records you a few, things, few very important things. One, the number of contaminants. So it's very easy to use because you can just click on the bin you're looking at. The app knows where you are, knows which address you're looking at, and you can choose between red, yellow, green, blue bin. Open the, you click on the bin, and then you have a selected list of possible mistakes you may see in the bin. Um, there is a button to check if the bin is overflowed or not. There is another button to see, to, to check if the bin is there or is not there, right? So it's, it's very useful information that goes into data, in a cloud-based database, automatic report, so you know what's going on. Right? So councils can have, or whoever is the stakeholder, they have access to a database that in real time gives you timeline trends. You can see seasonality. You can see maps, who's doing what. Right? So it gives you cuts data in a different way, but it's easy to use way. No one of us likes raw you know, dump of Excel spreadsheet. Uh, you know, I, I was a management consultant, so I played with Excel too much in my life. But Lots of people want something easy to comprehend extremely quickly, right? That's why we spend some time developing an analytic tool based on Tableau and other fancy things. But anyway, it makes it very easy for people to see what's going on. Um, 
thanks to our friend Tade Bull, we, thanks for the opportunity, we did some work around bean inspection in Randwick. And what we found out in the 18 months we ran bean inspection of the day was we, we found out key mistakes in different parts of the council. And uh, we found out what seasonality means, what happened at Christmas, different things, right? Well, I'm really happy to, to, to share with you the report and what happened there. But we, we were able to do another key thing, that is dividing people between good recycler and bad recycler on a map. So we were looking on a map, and imagine, Randwick has a big student population, there's a big university, and they have young families living in multi-unit uh, blocks. So we found some buildings with nappies issue. Some of the buildings with e-waste, students, e-waste issues, right? And what you can do with this data is actually putting on in a map, understanding who's doing what, who's not presenting the beans. But the very key important thing is that that's what we did, like going in the bad recyclers area. On Saturday morning, maybe you offer coffee to people, you sit there and you start chatting to them. You say, hey, why are you guys doing so bad? Why you guys put a jar of ketchup into an e-waste bin? It's e-waste means computer, it doesn't mean ketchup, right? And so talking to them, especially if you're not a council, or you're a third party at least, they open up and they will tell you all the reasons why they're not doing food recycling or why they have these issues. You can collect feedback from the users. And all of them were very engaged. They were waiting to tell someone why they hate recycling so much, right? At least you know what's going on. Other thing you can do, we're not in the business of of, of maps or stuff like that. But clearly you know which bins are full, which bins are empty, where and when. And you know, you can optimize different things, such as the way your trucks go around the council picking up different bins. So that's the first thing we do, right? Data analysis. The second thing we do is offering reward to people. Um, Kari, yesterday in her speech about the job that she did at City of Sydney, uh, regarding the reward winning, reward winning reverse vending machine, sorry, <laughs> was trying to say that. Uh, she mentioned that actually 95% of the people they interview were like very keen to recycle if there was a stake for them, right? If they were getting some reward, some ticket for the bar, something, right? Well, we think it's, it's very powerful. And we did with few exercises with different councils, Lankov, Ashfield, and other guys. And we, we implement our program. And what we found out is that, you know, people sign for the program, they get their points based on how they perform, so the way they recycle in the bins, and they can redeem their points with different set of partners we have. They range from Woolworths to Charities to Rosavers to West Aid to whatever it is, the partners that the council wants to work with. Um, the, the user, the member that is part of the program, has access to a dashboard and receives a weekly email or monthly, depending what we decide to do, but with its feedback, its score, what's the mistake he committed, how is he performing compared to his neighbor? Someone asked this morning in, in, in a panel said, well, when you put a bit of gamification in the game, people start competing with each other. So it's not only the money, it's how you perform with your neighbors, right? How you do compared to your street? And what are your top team mistakes? And we, we tried all of this in, um, in a few cases. I'm gonna tell you a story later, it's quite interesting. Anyway, we do believe that this ongoing feedback loop works based on three main pillars, so it's about Pulling recycling, what is the context of recycling? Why are you doing it? Transparency. And lots of people were asking us, what happened beyond the beans? Or demystifying things. Like, oh, I'm recycling, but I know the council anyway put everything in the same truck. Well, we know it's not true, right? Or, I hope, we, we hope so. And give them a sense of accountability. Last night, we checked your bin, there was a can of coke into the paper bin. And just to let you know, if you do that, the whole bin will go to landfill. And we cost the council and the community X amount of ton of carbon, emission, cost, money, whatever you want to do. But you're giving them accountability for what they do. And now it's my favorite part of the story, right? So um, Narel shared with us a story, Narel from, from EnviroBank, shared with us a story about someone in the Northern Territory that by collecting his few cents by walking every day, was out of job, right? All guys in the Northern Territory collecting cans, a few dollars per day, changes his life. Well, we saw the same thing in our trial in Nashville. So Giuseppe is 88 years old, right? He speaks Italian very well, English kind of okay, but I speak Italian, so it was okay. We met him at this event, we were pushing the program up. So he comes to us and, and as soon as he heard that he could get 10 bucks for signing up, uh, Vulis as a grocery store, store voucher, 
jumps in the program. All right, it's $10, why not? Next week, he got his first mail base. Right? We print the letter because the guy doesn't have email. So we put in his mailbox the feedback, how he performed, 3 out of 10, really bad. Next Saturday, 8 a.m., he's waiting for us in front of the same place where we did the event for three months, right? And he's like, guys, you're so wrong. Like, why are you giving me only three points out of 10? And he told me, well, well, there were bricks and there were X, Y, Z. Oh, no, no, this is not me. This is my neighbor. Well, that was the last time that his beam was contaminated. It was a perfect beam for the other 90 days we worked with them. It was a fantastic result. Not only, he wanted a T-shirt, and he collected all of his mates, like all these old Italian blogs, and every Saturday we're coming, and there were more people joining the program. Guys, we're talking about a demographic that not only doesn't know what recycling means, it doesn't properly maybe communicate in English, but they go get engaged. They feel they were part of something bigger. They felt they were doing something different, right? So it's the rewards push people to do something actually for the community as well, not just for the money they get. It's a way to catch their attention, but then you can drag them to something much bigger than just the 10 bucks, right? Few numbers, I love numbers, so clear results on what happened there. Well, 20% of the people in the selected area join us in three months. Guys, that's a big result. 10% aversion rate. So 10% of the red bin went to the yellow bin. 33% reduction in, uh, in uh, recycling mistakes and half the contamination that people had before. This is not us, this is an environmental consultancy firm, a big one, they did the only thing before and an only thing after. So it's someone else certifying the result of this behavioral change program. So it actually works, and it, we've been told that. It's, I love it. Anyway, I'll be too quick. But anyway, we do one more thing. It's called educating. So we, we, we love everyone, but we think that in Australia, there is a bit of disconnection between how you provide information to people and how people use information. So uh, I did some work with some companies in, in, in the West Coast in the US, and we engage a product designer from there. And the point is that an app to, be, to work very well needs to be extremely simple and needs to be two steps, right? So if I want to have information, I click two times and I have the result. If you put a PDF on your council website, hidden somewhere, I don't know how many people will go there. They probably get lost in transition, right? We'll try, but no. So we built this app. This app is free for everyone. Feel free to reach out to us. We're going to put your currency up there. No cost. I think it's a great offering. We want to make an easy app consistent for every council in Australia. So there is one place where I go, and I know what I should do. Right? And it's an app that has been designed with people that have strong expertise with companies such as Uber, like big companies that work in the digital space. And uh, we hope that's a way to fix the problem. And the way it works, um, you can download it. It's called Recyclopedia. And if you download it, it's, we get downloads, so it's great. And um, yeah, so basically pretty much has a, a, a square with nine different tiles with major items. It's based on your cancer, so you can select the cancer you're in. So if you move or you go to your girlfriend or your wife's place, you can just cancel where you live in, so you know what's going on there. And the last thing is we have more than 200 items over there. So you can search for the items you want to dispose of, or you can just tap and you will, you will find it quite quick. Um, at the moment, for the away from home recycling, we're referring to recycling a new website that clearly has all the information about stations, about uh, transfer stations for batteries, mobile phones, whatever it is. So not only we provide information for at home recycling based on your bin, but as well from away from home. They usually are the key issues, like you know, things like batteries and e-waste. This is one more thing I'm very excited to talk to you about. So we've been working for a long time with a very big partner in the industry, and finally it's official. So I'm very happy to announce we plan a talk over here, Brett, that we're working together on something very big, potentially, and to provide information to Australians in a very easy to reach way and free to use. And consistent, right? Consistency. One app for everyone with strong data behind it. The details are vague, but they will not be so vague. So, so that's, that's a great news. And I'm really happy to take any questions.